fell. I won't say that he was drunk. Before the wedding... Excuse me, Norman, I didn't say that. <laughs> and I didn't either. <laughs> Before the wedding, my family was invited to dinner at the Orler home. Following the dinner, Papa asked for a large plate. Pauline, who suspected the reason, suggested to Mrs. Orler that she give him a cheap plate, which was brought in by the black maid. Papa pronounced a blessing, smashed the plate on the floor. I'm told that the maid turned white. <laughs> Papa then took out a large white handkerchief and insisted that Mr. Orler take one end while he held the other and the two of them danced around the floor to cries of Mazel Tov. Anyway, the spell of the right took since Joyce, her, Joyce and I are still happily married after 50 years. Joyce and I went to the Berkshire Country Club for our honeymoon. We traveled by taxi, train, and car, just like our first date. And I was checking in, and I almost forgot to sign in for Joyce. That night, we went to bed as Mr. and Mrs. Ben Klein, and we heard some strange noises. There was squeaking, like metal rubbing against metal. After a while, we figured out what the noises were, because they came from the bed springs. <laughs> Same thing that happened when we went to bed. They came from all over. It was Flag Day, June 14th, a Sunday. Many couples had been married that day, and they were honeymooning. And boy, were they honeymooning. <laughs> And then Joyce made a terrible confession to me. She had not figured very well for the wedding day. Need uh, I explain? But this too we survived. We were both truly virgins. Before the wedding, I had gone into my corner drugstore and asked my pharmacist for a gross of condoms. Bill Starr, the pharmacist, kindly recommended to me that I confined my purchase to one dozen instead. <laughs> and he did it in such a way that I could save face. Nice guy, Bill Starr. Son of mine. Real son of a... Joyce had said that she did not want to work. Yeah, I, I, I'm reading this verbatim from his book, by the way, so... Joyce had said that she did not want to work after she was married, but I insisted that she would have to work for at least three years after we were, mar were married, and she agreed. We found an apartment on Bedford Avenue and we when we were apartment hunting, and I was willing to settle for a nice three-room apartment in an older building for $35 a month, but Joyce was not. So we rented a $55 a month apartment in the newest building in the city of New York. When we returned from our honeymoon, I had exactly $90 in the bank and our joint earnings was $80 a week. We were spending money for furniture and household goods and managed to spend only $90 a week. I don't know how we managed, but we did. As time went on, Joyce and I began thinking about having a child. You read the whole book. You wrote it. I decided that I had to know how much money was needed for a family of three on one salary. So I began to keep track of every possible penny we spent so we could determine our needs. After several months, I decided that we needed at least 55 a week to manage. So I went looking for a job paying $55 a week. I found it in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. By this time, it seemed opportune to start making a baby. That was the purpose of the move. And when Joyce came home from the doctor's office with the news, I was walking on the air about 10 feet off the ground. Joyce kept on working and came April 1945 and a baby was to be born. But when? The expected day came and I was in McKeesport, Pennsylvania for a meeting. I left word where I was to, to be but no call came. Eleven days later, it was Passover again, and at 4 a.m., Joyce told me that it was time to go to the hospital. I called the doctor, 
I awoke Tommy Goldstein, our next door neighbor, and we went to the hospital. I stayed with Joyce in the labor room until it was time for delivery, kidding with her between spasms, and then sat alone in the dark waiting room. Before leaving home, as I recall, while Joyce was getting ready to go, I ate some matzah, as I knew I would be in for a wait. <laughs> yes, it was Passover, Daniel. I sat and smoked. These, these were the days when I smoked and began worrying about things when I heard someone screaming. And there was no one there who I could talk to or to hold my hand. A baby was eventually born, and when I went to see the new mother, Joyce said, It wasn't too bad, Ben. I'll have another. When I went to see the baby, it was a boy, but I only saw one leg out of the blanket, and I began to worry. I kicked up such a fuss that they finally showed me the other one. Joyce's parents came for Kenneth Martin's bris. So did the apple trees. And so did the apple trees. When I called Mrs. Orler, following Kenny's birth, I told her that, that the baby was a boy, and she began to cry. She had wanted a girl because she had been looking in the store windows at pretty little dresses. Mommy, 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 mommy. Kenny was born April 20th, 1945, just after the death of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. I was stunned by his death, and I wanted to name the baby Franklin Delano Roosevelt Klein. <laughs> Fortunately, she, he was dissuaded by Joyce. If the baby had been a girl, which could have been even worse, we could have named her Carol Melody. But fortunately, Joyce hated that. When we came back from Pittsburgh, we moved in with Joyce's family, and I mean family. They lived on Beverly Road off Bedford Avenue in the upstairs apartment of the two-family house which was owned by Mrs. Orler. Mr. and Mrs. Orler had one bedroom, Shirley and Wally had the second, Grandpa Moss had the music room, and Joyce and I and Kenny had the sun porch, and one bathroom for all of us. It was wonderful for Kenny to be surrounded by Mishpacha. Let me see if I can uh, skip a couple of things. Thank you. Thank you. I don't skip Barbara. <laughs> and Barbara was born, and she grew up. In 1951, I decided to give a 49th wedding anniversary party for Mom and Pop. It was to be a surprise party. It was such a surprise that Pop didn't come. Mom was there with the family. Little, let's see. Barbara was born in 1948 just as we bought a house and lived in Hempstead, where I took up yard work and just loved it. Talking about moving, we moved to Columbia, South Carolina in 1952, where we found a house to rent on McFadden Street. Then again, in 1957, in June, we moved to Montgomery, Alabama. Of course, the change was not easy on the family, as it meant another move of schools for the children and the need for Joyce to make new friends and a new house, a new community. But Joyce never complained. She was the same gal who had understood the need for a social worker to move. Um, hold on just a second. In the process of moving around, like another, year, like a year in Augusta, Georgia, the children were frequently faced with new schools, and I'm sure it affected their schoolwork. My daughter Barbara was a great one for protesting what was fair and what was not fair. One day she protested, Daddy, she said, this isn't fair that the students do all the work and the teachers get paid for it. <laughs> Barbara now works in the schools, so let her talk about the other end now. Then we moved to New York. Kenny went to Atlanta for a five-year sentence at Georgia Tech, and Barbara came with us to New York for high school and college. Uh, 
What did you find in Atlanta besides the debris? <laughs> yeah, what did you find in Atlanta? Oh, you want me to skip to that already? That's not even good. <laughs> okay. He found me and God is he lucky. <laughs> you can skip over that part too. <laughs> and he gets on his hands and knees every night okay. and, and looks up and says, thank you, God, for such a wonderful woman. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> I didn't say that. Um, <laughs> you might as well have. That's right. <laughs> On June 9, 1968, one day after graduating from Georgia Tech, <laughs> Kenny married Joanne, and they moved to Iowa, then Maine, then Maryland, and finally Virginia Beach. Didn't you go to Maine? A friend in Iowa, Joe yeah, Savage, Maine, told Maryland. Kenny about a job said, in Virginia. No, Iowa first. And then Joe moved here, Joe and Barbara, moved here to Columbia. Andrea Lynn, our first grandchild, was born to Joanne on August 1972. Up, that was August, <laughs> and in February, Joyce and I and Rose Appleberg visited them in Virginia Beach and saw the only snow of the winter, and we were snowed in. The electricity failed in their all-electric house. <laughs> Joanne, in all her serious said, seriousness, said, at least we have an electric blanket for the baby. <laughs> Laura Beth was born on June 16, 1975. I think it would be appropriate to sing her happy birthday right now. Her birthday's Tuesday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, you Laura. Happy birthday to you. Look at the camp. We have another birthday girl on Tuesday. Helen, Helen Mandel. Joey's uh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Birthday's tomorrow. My father. And their 46th anniversary. Ah. Congratulations. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, dear Mendel. Happy anniversary to you. At any rate, I was getting bored by my job, and by 1976, I was 62 years old, had enough of work, and wanted to retire. Joyce, however, enjoyed her work and didn't want to quit, so I stuck it out for another year. And we came here to Columbia, Thanksgiving 1977, with Pappy. I loved the climate, the flowers, the trees, and the many good friends and memories of this lovely community. In Columbia, They've been Volunteers of the Year at the hospital, at the Veterans Administration, at synagogues. They've been honored as Man and Woman of the Year. And they've also been Bar and recently Mom has been Bat Mitzvah. Barbara gave us while we were here an IRS grandson. He was born on December 20th. Good for her. Excuse me. I got that written down. December 30th. Oh, you're in trouble. And by the way, Barbara got married too while, while they were here. Which came first, good thing. Unfortunately, Rod can't be with us today. And she's going to have an anniversary here in just a couple of weeks. Happy, Happy anniversary, anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, dear Barbara. Happy anniversary to you. In conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> I deserve the positive.